How long did it take you from, you did two years of research and then somebody had to start writing music. That took a while. Yeah, the, the music, um, I started writing um, about three years after finishing the libretto. And um, we finished the libretto and at that two year point, that was when my friend was supposed to die. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't. So then we tried to find a composer um, I sent it around to a number of extremely well-known composers, and uh, some of them I heard back from, but I, I realized it wasn't going to happen that way. And then meanwhile, turn around, and it was the five-year survival point for my friend. And at that point, his oncologist said, I, I don't want to see you again. You're cured. So I, I said to him, hey, if you can be cured, I can write this opera. And, you know, it was it was in recalling that I told myself when I was you know, 12 or 14 that I always wanted to write an opera. I thought, maybe this is my chance. You know? So I started um, working on it. I, I knew you know, a fair amount about music and composing. I had studied some in college. I had always, always my life, I've read little books about composition and so on. But I decided I would learn how to orchestrate. I studied scores. I read books on orchestration. Um, uh, did various things to build up my skills. And then I started writing. Um, the first year, I composed at the piano and then orchestrated it. And I had a very good friend that I went to college with who looked at some of what I did. And he said, you have to stop doing this. You have to write directly for the orchestra. It's going to be much more genuine if you do. So I mean, that, was a real, that was a huge transition for me to go from playing out a score, something I knew how to do, and going directly from my head to the page for a full orchestra. It took me about a year to practice it to do it, but I, I mastered that. And uh, I mean, to the extent that I did master it. And I must say he was right. I think that uh, I went back and I completely rewrote everything I had done. Um, uh, so there, there would be more uniformity. But you know, I was raising a family, I had my medical practice, I was teaching, I was doing research, uh, trying to make tenure, all these things were going on. Um, so it took me a long time. And I never imagined that I'd actually see this work performed. I was doing it as a self, you know, development activity. I remember the day that I finished the end of the first act, and um, it's it's in some respects, you know, possibly the most dramatic moment in the opera. It's uh, especially the way we changed history to to add, to make it the end of an act, which you know Eleanor is on the train with her with her cousins, and um, and the revelation, which actually occurred in Warm Springs, but we put it on the train to increase the drama. Um, you know, that he had died with, with uh, her former secretary, who was his mistress, and then her confronting the coffin on the train, um, and then having to greet the public, and so forth, in the midst of all of that. So that is the end of, of the first act, and I remembered when I finished that, I thought, okay, this is what I can do. This is, I can't go beyond this point. I felt like I'd kind of finished the opera at the end of that act, and I set it aside for five years. Five years. Five years. I thought, you know, I've... And plus other things were going on with my work, my life. I was very busy. And then I picked it up again um, uh, around uh, uh, September 11th, uh, which was my, my older son's... Tw um, sorry. My older son's uh, 21st birthday that day. Um, and... Um, I wrote a cantata of peace, which got my sort of juices going again, and then I started working on the opera. The hardest time was facing the end of the opera. That's when you know Eleanor has to make a set of decisions and has to change and relate to her daughter and gets a letter from uh, the mistress um, trying to reach out to her in, in her grief. And I thought I. I don't know that I'm up to that moment. I don't know that I can convey, you know, the power of that moment. 
but um, my family went on a vacation to Hawaii. And uh, we have some friends, uh, a, a very well-known um, sculptress, uh, Deborah Butterfield, and, and her husband is also a well-known artist, John Buck. And uh, we stayed in their home, and I was overlooking the, the beautiful um, ocean, and I just started writing and finished the opera there on, you know, in four days on their porch. <laughs> it was like you know, getting away from all the stress of life and being able to be a different person for four days, which is kind of what it takes, is stepping into an entirely different persona, kind of. Mm-hmm.